Hello everyone, welcome back. We're Nick and Sarah and if you're new around here, we're usually travelling around Europe in our camper van. But this year we built out a new van, bought some off-grid land in Portugal and are currently back in the UK seeing family and trying to do a bit of travelling. In last week's vlog we explored the beautiful Norfolk coastline, hoping to see some seals on the beach. But we failed. And we also failed at finding anywhere decent to park up as Norfolk isn't very van friendly. However, we did find some amazing beaches and meet some lovely locals. Join us this week as we explore one of the the most iconic cities in the world, but not before a stopover in the stunning Norfolk Broads. So the Norfolk Broads, I think they're best seen on the water by a boat. I think you really have to go out a higher boat and go off exploring down all the little waterways and over the big lakes and stuff. Not the same when you're on the shore, but we did find a nice little park up at the Maltzers pub. If you have food and drinks in there, they let you stay in the car park. There's a toilet there. Just off the edge of the water, you've got beautiful views across the Malt House Broad. We did a nice little nature trail through boardwalks to a little visitor centre. Really nice, but we've left there now and we're just on the outskirts of Cambridge. What are you doing? Who said you could do that? <laughs> we've agreed. They did we? They did didn't we? Last. They didn't last. They were actually coming unstuck a bit themselves, so they're not the same stickers that we had on little old Vinster. They're, they're not as good. So we decided that we're not having stripes anymore, which was my choice in the first place. Nick wanted stripes. I didn't really want stripes. Less obvious, isn't it, as well, I think, without the stripes. Yeah, you don't even see the van now, do you? <laughs> we'll do the rest later. This was a great place to spend the night, wasn't it? Really good. Um, this is just like a 20 mile an hour road residential area. Felt completely safe. There's a lot of cars parked here now because it's free parking. I think it's only about 10 minutes walk into the city centre. And it's just next to this um, football pitch and sports grounds over here. So yeah, it's really good. my love first impressions of Cambridge I quite like it we arrived quite late last night but what we've seen so far we were using park for night and there was several options within like you know 10 minutes walk to the city center now you guys might be wondering why didn't we go to Norwich because we spent like a week in Norfolk all together and that's like the capital of the yeah. area isn't it we did go to Norwich but not for very long as usual in a rush we arrived quite late the weather was a bit rubbish as well it was raining a little bit and we couldn't find anywhere a reasonable yes. to park up so we ended up just parking in the shopping centre and then Nick went off on his bike for an hour and a half or something like that just to have a quick look around so we'll save that for a proper day out next time but you had a you had a little taster it was quite nice cycling around Norwich I had to visit for my dad, he's always wanted to go and he's never got the chance. So I thought I'd have a little explore. And did you know that Norwich was one of the most important centres, bigger than London, like back in the day? Bigger than London? Bigger than London, or more important than London. Mm. I think it was Norwich, then Winchester, from what I remember, and then sort of London came the centre. But yeah, it's quite nice. It's got a medieval centre. It's got so much history. The Norwich Cathedral dates back to 1096. Wow. A Norman cathedral originally, and it's got the second tallest spire in England and the second largest cloisters. And the cloisters are quite spectacular, really. And Harry Potter was filmed there. Hogwarts, if you've watched the film series, Hogwarts, large parts of it were filmed in Norwich Cathedral. Norwich is said to have a pub or used to have a pub for every day of the year and a church for every Sunday of the year and there are a lot of churches I can tell you around every corner you see another little church and it's done with this sort of Norfolkian 
style with all the, the rocks. And just while we're on the subject of Norfolkian. Norfolkian? Norfolk. Oh, yeah. Where does the word Norfolk come from? Does anyone know? We know, don't we? I think I know. Go on then. Norfolk is because where the northern invaders, like the Vikings, the Danes and uh, Norwegians and stuff, they came and settled largely in the Norfolk area. So it was the North Norfolk. Folk. And there's so many places which have ham in the title, so many villages and towns that have like Holcombe and I'll put some examples on screen. And that's because ham means farm or homestead and the Vikings and Northmen set up farms and stuff. So that's why a lot of the villages and towns in Norfolk have ham at the end. But yeah, Norwich, it's worth a little cycle around. It's got like a, an old street which has the Tudor style buildings. It's got a very colourful market. Unfortunately, on Sundays, it's a good day to drive into a city, but not a good day to walk around because everything's closed. So they're very colourful market, which is one of the biggest outdoor markets in England, was all shut up. It looked desolate and a little bit run down. But yeah, very nice city to have a little wander around. Don't you just love visiting the United Kingdom? There's so much history, isn't there? So, so much, much history. history. And talk about history. We are just about coming up to the University of Cambridge. And this university has been around since 1209 and it's the third oldest university in the world. In the world. Are we in Italy, darling? I know. We've like the gondolas, isn't it? the dogs aren't allowed anywhere. So we were summoned out of the grounds with our doggies. You can't go in the Trinity College grounds with the dogs, although there's no sign on that gate. But anyway, you can go in there if you don't have doggies, but you can't cut through if you've got doggies. But luckily you can walk along the edge of the, the river and cross the other bridges. Yeah. Because they're public. Yeah, so it's not too bad. Not as bad <laughs> as we first thought. We were like, what? We're going back to Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the punts that you can hire and you can just hire one for £24 an hour and go off around or you could get a guided tour for £20 per person. Dogs aren't allowed We there. can't do it, no. Not with the doggies. I'm just thinking walking around, I haven't seen any doggies. Have you? No. We haven't seen any people with any dogs yet. We've just spent like a week in Norfolk and it's very dog friendly. You see dogs everywhere, there's more dogs than people. I mean, I suppose we are still around the university and the college grounds, so a lot of these people could be students or, I don't know. Mature students. Mature students. Um, <laughs> yeah, where's all the dog people? Are you sure we're allowed in this bit with dogs? It's quite quiet, isn't it? It's all quite quiet. Because they're all reading books and in libraries and studying, aren't they? So this building here is probably the most iconic or is the most iconic building in Cambridge I would say wouldn't you? Definitely. The definitely. King's College and it was built, started being built in 1440 about Ooh. but it wasn't complete until 100 years later. It's got the largest fan vault ceilings in the whole world. In the whole world. And the stained glass windows are pretty impressive too. Now obviously we can't go in there with doggies but we have seen a couple of other people with dogs. So it does seem like you can bring your dog to Cambridge. <laughs> it's pretty iconic though. When you think about all the cities to visit in the UK, you've got Bath, you've got York, obviously London and all the big ones, but this has got to be up there and it's, it's a very nice centre to walk it's around. It's very nice. So just past King's College and this sort of main area, there's the Corpus Clock which is quite strange. It's a sculpture inaugurated. Inaugurated. So it's one of those words. One of those I've words that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, by Stephen Hawking, I think in 2008. It's a weird sculpture of like a time eating insect on a handless clock, which is lit up at the, by LEDs at night and it's gold and it sort of symbolizes time just ticking away. And all you can hear is the sound of the pendulum going left and right just eating every second that passes just taking time away from you on that note we need to get a move on so i think this is the little outdoor 
market selling all sorts of food from around the world. I don't think the whole market's on today. Um, it smells it's very, very good walking down nice. there, doesn't it? Very nice. Too much choice. I was going to go for the roti uh, with curry sauce from Malaysia, which we used to have all the time when we were there. But I went for the Cypriot kebab. Even the scaffolding is nice in Cambridge. I'm not just going to leave it up like that, aren't they? Put some vines on there. I have to say, this is one of the best cities I've been to in the UK. Really? In Europe. I'm, I'm pretty impressed, really. You've got this lovely canal, all the stuff along the canal. You've got these amazing old buildings, all the stuff to do with the university, the churches, the cathedrals. And it looks like a set out of Harry Potter, although I don't yeah. think it was filmed here. You've got all these spires sticking up. Every corner you turn, every new street you walk down, there's all these majestic fantasy-like buildings and Gothic and Romanesque architecture. Everything's like together. It's like yeah. a, small, a small area with so much to see. I mean, this is obviously the main area. I mean, there's probably a little bit more to see, mm. but it's all quite compact. All the main areas, just like a few main streets centered around the King's College and that market and mm. St. Great Mary's, it's really accessible. And I think it's only like 150,000 population, so it's not a massive city. Yeah. And you can park, park yeah. for free, yeah. 10 minutes walk away. Brilliant. Every corner you go around or every really nice building you look through the doorway, it's like such and such college, St King's College, St John's College. Look at that. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? And that's just comprehensive school. Is it? No, I don't think they have comprehensive schools in Cambridge. So as I was saying, that's just a college, isn't it? St John's College. That's yeah. just a college. What where about people this here? This study. is cool as well. And that's just a little round church from the 12th century, I think. You can have a little wander around there. Probably quite small, but very, very pretty. Just one of the many, many incredible buildings in Cambridge. Morning guys, and you join us parked up at probably one of the best park ups in the UK. It's amazing. You've got water fill ups, free drinking water, you've got electric hookup, you've got use of a toilet, a shower, you get meals cooked for you. It's run by a lovely little old couple, very knowledgeable about the local area and the whole of the country and the world from the distinguished gentleman. Yes, you've guessed that we're back on my parents' driveway. Yeah, we've been back here for the last few days, catching up with family, spending some quality time together. But today we need to prepare the van and ourselves for our trip north to Scotland. But first, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor of this video, and that is HelloFresh. Now, I'm sure most of you guys have heard of HelloFresh before. It's a brilliant service, and it's basically a meal delivery service that deliver all of the fresh ingredients straight to your door for you to create masterpieces in the kitchen. I'm going to leave the QR code on the screen because they've got a brilliant discount for you. It's 60% off your first box and then 20% off the next two months of boxes. And the best part about it is desserts for free for life. So basically everything is measured out, all of the ingredients, and all you have to do is follow their menu cards, follow step by step to create absolutely wonderful meals. It couldn't be simpler. You download the app, you sign up, then you choose your meal plan. So you could have like mainly meat, or you could have pescatarian, you could have veggie, plant-based. They basically cater for everyone. Then it's a case of choosing how many people you want to cook for. So you can cook for two people or four people. And then how many meals do you want per week? So you can choose two meals per week, three, four. So it's very flexible and you can cancel and change all of these aspects each time you order a new box. So obviously when you're cooking at home, meals can get a little bit samey, a little bit boring, and that's why HelloFresh is really great. You could switch a couple of meals out per week with HelloFresh meals, and then you're trying something new, you're practicing your cooking skills, and don't forget you get to keep all of those menu cards that HelloFresh send 
from the meals that you're going to be making. There is so many meals to choose from, literally so many, so you're never going to get bored. There's delicious fish meals like sea bass and salmon. You could choose Mexican like tacos, so many different curries to choose from, pasta dishes, burgers, there's casseroles, noodles, plant-based meals, stir fries. Honestly guys, I don't think you could ever get bored from HelloFresh's meals. Click the link in our description to sign up for HelloFresh and it's an incredible offer. It really is 60% off your first box and then 20% off your next two months of boxes and free desserts for life. I'll leave the QR code on screen again now. Sign up for HelloFresh today and start getting creative in the kitchen. How's the prep for Scotland going then, love? Raining outside. And it's been raining for a fair while, annoyingly. But yes, this is the prep for Scotland. Nice jacket. Big jackets. Nick and I have just purchased two really warm big jackets. So this is so warm that I'm actually getting a little bit too hot in the van, even though it's what temperature is it? 16 degrees. Yeah. So good jackets. Survival kit this, little heated pad, water bottle, and that's something we bought before. Thermal leggings, thermal socks. We've got the gloves, we've got the hats, we've got the scarves, we've got the big jackets. We've got the heater is working in the van. The doggies, look at the doggies right now. Just before it started raining, thankfully, we managed to get the cable, a big thick cable that's running from the main starter battery into the back of the van and it's going to charge our power stations mm. when we drive game changer yeah just about got the rugs and everything back in place before it started raining again shouldn't have a problem with power now yeah like seriously Very that excited. is a game changer we haven't used this as this setup yet at all um we've used the bathroom got in there and you know used the loo and stuff like that but we haven't actually hung a shower and had a full shower in here we've just been washing so far and we would like to have a shower i have to say we are quite excited about heading off in the van again for like an early winter trip starting to get colder now we're excited about seeing scotland because we've always wanted to go up there but we are a little bit worried have we mm. has the ship sailed for scotland since we put the last video out about how hard it was to find park ups in norfolk i mean a lot of folk were saying you know once you get up north and go up there it's going to be completely different you know norfolk's renowned for being hard for camper vans but then we had quite a few messages coming in saying even scotland's getting difficult now the locals and stuff don't like motorhomes and camper vans i think quite a few of those people were referring to the the popular NC500. NC500. Yeah. And I also think it's more so the case in the summer where it gets overrun mm. by camper vans. But we are a little bit nervous about the situation. I've always wanted to go up there and obviously everyone raves about it. It looks like quite similar to Norway, just not as jaggedy. It's going to be amazing, but yeah, I'm a little bit worried about that. And surely the locals will just be happy to see the back of the main tourists and these, and welcome these the hardened explorers. travellers. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be all right with us. Sarah just said to me, were her knickers on show in that shot? <laughs> um, I said, no, don't worry about it. Your little knackered knick, knickers, knackered knackers. knickers. Knackered knickers. Your little knackered knickers were <laughs> just hanging on the line there. On the line, sorry, on the curtain rail. This beautiful curtain rail, which also doubles up as a, a knicker drying line. <laughs> but not just that. Check this out, guys. Sorry, just moved those knickers out of the way. Seen enough of those. Ta-da! Look at that new setup. And I am just demonstrating how we sit here and watch our 40-inch screen in the van. Nick has been messing about with this uh, screen and the um, projector for blinking ages, and he's finally done it. He's finally got the perfect setup. So now, if we can sit here and watch it, or when we've got the bed down, we can watch it. Little things, please, little minds. I was very happy how I put this up. See, that just goes like that. It's got a little ridge on that side and I needed some hooks. So I just made these little hooks. It needed to go over the top of here. I've just put some tape on it so the nice pole doesn't get scratched. But that was just a wire coat hanger. And you can see that, that goes over there, just slots on there. Couldn't be easier because we do like having a little movie night and put the projector up, but it's always been a lot of hassle. We also had the projector here, didn't we? Yeah, it was like clipped onto this sort of shelf and balanced here, but then it was sort of swinging round and then you couldn't access this sort of surface so well. So now it just goes there 
perfect. We finally did Happy it. Happy day. Happy day. We will demonstrate and have a little movie night in here soon and yes. show you how cosy we'll get it. Get the popcorn out, get all it nice and cosy, on, all the lights on. We'll show you yeah. the explorers at night. <laughs> that just goes up there. And then as well as that, we've got rain jackets, umbrellas, more warm clothing. See, Sarah's jacket seems to have, it seemed to have taken over there. I don't know how many jackets you've got, but they seem to be everywhere. I have actually got, that's a light rain jacket for light wear. That's an extra sort of big fleecy green thing. Then hoodies, there's the new jacket. You've got this psychedelic one. And we've got our other hiking jackets. So we have actually don't worry guys, one. I did get a new jacket as well. We need to go on with the shower. These are a good little hook choice, don't you? You're only gonna have a shower like... Not that much, are you? No, you have a wash, but actual shower, probably only, you know, once a week. There you go guys, for those of you who didn't understand where we're going with the shower. Works doesn't it? And then the rest of the time, you've got the space. This is the inside of the shower, you can't, it's a bit tricky to kind of film. Um, yeah, I mean it's enough room in here to have a shower. It's similar to a little old Vinster's shower. It's actually quite cosy in here darling. I want to go in there. I know, I'm excited to try it out now and this is actually is it three metres? Yeah, three This is a three metre curtain, wide. shower curtain. So most shower curtains, I think, are 180 by 180 or 180 by 200 length. And we found a 300 one, so it goes all the way around. I like it. And um, it obviously, it's not perfect, nothing is. But that is really easy to take down. How many are there? Five hooks? Five, Five hooks. hooks. See you later. <laughs> We will fix it, we will fix it, we will fix it. Is this the impression of... Bagpuss that while showing my age, you know, the little mechanical mice of the mouse organ. Sang a song like that, can't remember, I was probably about three. But yeah, I just can't felt even remember that. Big purple, big pink cat and there's some little mice. Which, yeah, anyway. For those of you who are wondering how old Nick and I are, he's obviously quite a bit older than me. We were just thinking to ourselves, what are we gonna do when this shower <laughs> curtain is wet? We just magnet it to the side of the van and it dries yeah. really quick. But the thing is, the good thing about this, about, you know, demonstration, most of the time we can just crouch down here and just shower like this and the water's gonna spray and this is all waterproof and it'll just go down there. Put this across. Yeah. And if that gets a little bit wet, it doesn't matter. So a full on shower and you want a bit of luxury. <laughs> you get this out. And these hooks, look, we've got handy little hooks when we're not got the shower. Ball. Little washing iron, yeah. Drying knickers. Oh no. Good morning guys, and we are nearly ready to hit the road and head off north to Scotland and we are really looking forward to it. Replacing these houses with trees, mountains, lakes, rivers, wilderness and no people or not many people. Yeah, since we've been in the UK it doesn't feel like we've escaped, escaped and got away from it and you know found the wilderness and found some quiet spots away from people who'd always been surrounded by buildings and traffic and stuff. Yes, I think the boys are definitely ready for adventure. I think they're getting over these little walks around the local neighbourhoods. I've had a few outings to the park though. Dizzy's been going for runs with Sarah. And my sister and my niece came over. We took the boys down the park chasing squirrels, meeting up with their cousin Jasper. Um, so a bit of fun, but yeah, I'm ready to hit the road, the open road, get away from the traffic, get away from residential areas. Go and find some mountains. Look after yourselves. Yes, we were. This wasn't supposed to happen. We were supposed to be going first and waving to our to my mum, but as it happens, as usual, we're always late. So mum's going off with her friend. Oh, thanks for everything, mum. Mm. 
We'll be back to see you. We'll be back shortly for your birthday. Don't make me cry now. No, I don't know, Cameron. Say goodbye to the subscribers. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Sarah. <laughs> Bye, Charlie we'll and see Dizzy. See you soon. Bye, Mum. Bye. Gosh, I've never had so many kisses. <laughs> Take care. Have a nice Bye. meal. See ya. Bye. Uh, and you're all on your own now, Dad. Oh, gosh. Freedom, freedom. <laughs> We've got space in the van. There's three seats in the front. <laughs> yes, well, I'm not quite sure about that. You might that. get in trouble if you leave with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, little Dizzy. <laughs> he's like, I don't want it on. But he does because he's I sat do, there. I do, I don't, I do, I don't. He's sat there shivering. There we go. And um, we really need to get off this driveway now. We were supposed to leave at 8 o'clock this morning. And as usual with the explorers, everything takes long... Yes, Charlie! <laughs> everything takes longer than you think. And now it is quarter to one. And we're still on the driveway. And we've got a three-ish, more than three-hour drive to get where we're going to get to today, or I hope to get to today, our first destination, which we're not going to tell you about. But it's quite a cool place. But you'll have to come back and see all of that in next week's vlog. <gasps> yes, we are leaving in the next hour for sure. <laughs> Hopefully. It's because we keep filming. We need to stop filming so we can get ready and go. We've still got to do the waters. We've still got to collect your laptop and blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, my mum will come back from having a meal out with a friend and we'll be the whole saying goodbye and getting all emotional again, even though we're only going off for a month. I won't tell you where we're going on the way up to Northumbria, but we are going Northumbria. to... Northumbria? Northumbria? Northumberland. Northumberland. Is it? Northumbria? Oh, gosh. What is it? Northumberland, isn't it? Northumbria is the county, is it? And Northumberland... Oh, we sound stupid now. We sound really stupid. We're, we're going up north. <laughs> we're going to that coastline and then we are going to Scotland, finally. <laughs> oh my finally goodness. going to Scotland. Yeah. Come and join us next week and find out where we've been, where we are. And... Where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> where we're going. You'll know when we know. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog, guys. Make sure you're subscribed. Tell all your friends about us. It's free, it's easy, and it really helps us out and means the world to us. Yeah, follow us for daily updates on our other socials, and we will see you all next Thursday. Take care, guys. See you next week. Bye, bye, bye. Idiot.